John 12. Yeah, the first verse. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead... There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and all the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, now notice, see that personal pronoun, his? That means it's still his. Just because you messed up doesn't mean you've got to get resaved. You just forgot who you were. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, Then he said, Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, he used it to take what, uh, to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. Now understand. At that moment, they are basically three and almost a half years into following Jesus. So he knew he was the Messiah. As a matter of fact, Jesus healed Judas' daddy, Simon, from leprosy. So how can somebody who God has been so good to turn around and do something so stupid? Somebody had to do it. Now what's this? In the Hebraic culture, a father and son were very close. If you come against one, you've come against the other. Now Simon is a believer, but he's still a Pharisee. Judas is a believer, but What's this? In that culture, if I offend the son, I have offended the father. You never bring offense into a person's house who invited you there. So when Judas started thinking in his heart, man, what could I have done with that oil? Jesus perceived it and corrected him in his own house. Now understand... People who commit failures, even willingly or even unwillingly, are for one of two reasons, hurt or greed. See, we've always as ministers taught, well, Judas loved money so much. No, it wasn't the love of money that Judas did this. How do you know, Mark? Because he didn't spend any of it that he got from them. If it was about the money, he would have already spent it. It was about the hurt. He had offended his house by speaking truth. Amen. And I've had people sell me out because I offended their house by speaking truth. But somebody had to do it. So what's this? Why did Judas turn Jesus over? Because he was so hurt. How many times have we done things because we were hurt? And then Judas goes and hangs himself. Let's go back to Matthew, the 27th chapter. Are you all okay with this? Matthew 27. This This message is not a license to go do something stupid. It is a springboard to bounce back from stupid. Okay? Matthew 27, the first verse. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders. So hear me. Judas did not sell Jesus for the sake of the money. Or he would have negotiated the price. Okay, Judas turned Jesus over because he was angry and hurt. 
saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Don't do it. Don't beat yourself up even if you've done something wrong. I want to take just about five or ten minutes and show you somebody had to do it. It was already prophesied in the Old Testament. Somebody's going to sell him for 30 pieces. Who's going to sell him? The one who gets offended. Amen. How many times have we gotten offended at somebody and sold our love cheaply? Well, you don't know what they did to me. What, what does it matter? Somebody had to do it. Well, why me? Isn't it amazing we always get mad at something we have a problem with ourselves? Because it's easier to judge that person than it is ourselves. Whew. Amen. Now watch. So let me ask you again, and I, d I don't want to be too repetitive, but Judas was a believer, wasn't he? And he, hang, he hanged himself. Okay. And all believers go where before Jesus died? Paradise. If Judas would have waited a little over six hours, Jesus was going to die for him. But isn't it amazing how many people feel like they need to pay a penalty to feel redeemed. And so, what's this? Judas goes to paradise because he's a believer. Who do you think he saw in paradise? Every saint, every believer, the Messiah was coming, was waiting in paradise. Don't you know he looked over and he saw this, this guy. He, he's a little old now. He said, excuse me, sir. Uh, whew, I just got here. Where am I? This is paradise. And, and may I ask you, what, what is your name? I'm Abraham. The father Abraham? Because see, Judas is a temple boy. All his life he's heard the rabbis teach from Isaiah about their father Abraham. And he's looking just in awe and amazement. Where's Sarah? She's the one hitting her head on the wall wondering how I got her pregnant at 100. <laughs> Amen. But then, then he's, he's, he's looking around. And he sees this guy pacing back and forth. And he said, Abraham, I'm sorry to bother you again, but who is that? He said, that's Isaiah. That's Isaiah. You're kidding me. Excuse me, sir. Uh, you're, you're Isaiah. Yes, sir. I just wanted to meet you because I grew up hearing your writings. I grew up hearing there is an anointed one coming that will cleanse the leper, preach the gospel of, of the love of God. I, I've heard your writings all my life. Now, now, what's this? I'm a common sense kind of guy. No one in paradise knew what Jesus looked like. Except Judas. Now wait a minute. Do you remember in Matthew the third chapter? Jesus had to have a forerunner to the earth. To announce him who he was. John was the announcement of Christ to the earth. But Judas was the announcer of Christ to those waiting in doom. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to be the John 
that announced Jesus to the earth. And somebody had to be the Judas that announced help to the hopeless. So when he's talking to Isaiah, he says, Sir, man, I love your writings. But, hey, everybody, come here. I'm not the one you're looking for. But the one coming after me is mightier than I. The one you're about to see, because see, about 12 hours after this, Jesus showed up in paradise. And the Bible says he preached the gospel to them. How did those in paradise know to believe in Jesus? Because Judas was there as an eyewitness. So we can down Judas and say, Oh, you shouldn't have ever got that divorce. You shouldn't have ever got off on those drugs. You shouldn't have ever got hooked up on alcohol. You shouldn't. But wait a minute, somebody had to do it. Because now I'm not hanging myself over that that anymore I'm now going to use it as a platform to announce to people look I've been through what you've been through and he's delivered me out of it I now have an anointing to announce your deliverance so why would I beat myself up over a failure somebody had to do it because there's people that have done what I did that don't know there's a way out until I show up. Amen. 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 That's right. Now, now watch. So Judas, if he never sold him, somebody had to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was already foretold. Right. So instead of looking at a problem as, boy, the devil's fighting. Wow, I've got another stage for ministry. Yeah. Because somebody's got to do it. You hear what I'm saying? Don't take it as a license to go get stupid. I'm just saying, when you mess up or if a thought of your past comes to your mind, well, Mark Judas, Judas took his own life, so he, he went to hell. No, no, see, let, let me show you. Not everybody that takes their own life goes to hell. They took their life because they couldn't get out of hell. Okay? But let let me just clear this up because uh, you know everything we hear about Judas is always doom and gloom and, and, and these are, this is one of the verses that is used Mark the 14th chapter the 21st verse are y'all getting anything out of this so use that failure as a stage to announce an anointing that will bring deliverance to that person amen don't hang yourself well Mark am I hanging myself do you keep asking forgiveness Because if you keep it, and I'm going to smoke a cow, God will never urge you to ask for forgiveness from Him. I'm already forgiven. Asking forgiveness doesn't make me right with God. It makes me believe I'm right with God. It makes me believe I'm right with God. My boys could do something stupid and never ask me to forgive them, but it doesn't mean I stop loving them. Well, I will will treat you better when you ask me to forgive you. (laughs) Until they tell me they're sorry, I will not lift another finger. Wow. You see how wrong that is? Because if your love is stipulatory, then your judgment is unrighteous. Amen. And so, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you of sin. The Holy Spirit convinces you of righteousness. The word convict should have been translated convince. You know that. So, it's never God saying you need to ask me to forgive you. That's not the, that's not the God of love. That's your enemy of consciousness, unrenewed mind, that's trying to wear you out. God forgive me well Mark am I hanging myself do you keep beating yourself up well how do I know I'm free from it because you can minister out of it you know you're free from something when you can minister to others out of it just going around saying I'm free I'm free well that's great but let's see how free you are 
can you use that failure as an entry to announce to others their deliverance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as Sherry said, tell your story now, not just to the saints, <laughs> amen? There's too many good people that feel disqualified from hanging around us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> D- can you imagine people not feeling worthy to hang around us? Well, you all live better than I do. Well, hey, no, somebody's got to do it. You have a ministry in an area, I don't have one. I need you. Now, that's not a license to keep on doing it. It's a license to say, I'm not going to make it an impediment in my life, and I'm not going to keep hanging myself over it. Right. Amen? Look at Mark 14, the 21st verse. This is the reason Jesus, uh, Judas gets a bad rap. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Now, wait a minute. Was Judas the betrayer? Yes. But how many of us have betrayed Christ? Well, Mark, how did I betray Christ? Anytime you feel shame, guilt, and condemnation and let it stifle your witness, you are betraying Christ. Anytime you feel disqualified from being used of God, you are betraying Christ. Okay? But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Here here it is. It would have been good for that man if he had never been born. That's how Judas gets a bad rap right there. Well, it had been... But wait a minute. I think Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Now, is all life form created by God? Can God make a mistake? Oh, so evidently we've misread that. God wasn't saying I shouldn't have ever made Judas. Somebody had to do it. If it wasn't going to be Judas, it could have been Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It could have been any of the disciples. But somebody had to do it. How do I know who's going who's to start doing some stupid things? The ones that get offended easily. Okay? And so, Judas, it would have been better you had never been born. That's not what it means. The context of the scripture is this. Woe to the man who lives in the discouragement of failure. If he continues to live in that knowledge, it would have been better he had never been born. That's how much I love you. I don't want you to live in the regrets of your failures. It would have been better you weren't born if you were just going to live in the frustration of failure. That's what that means. It's not meaning it's not a good thing Judas was born. Because if Judas didn't do it, somebody had to. That's just the way it was going to unfold. Let me show you one more. Acts the first chapter. Acts 1, the 25th verse, or uh, let's let's go to the 21st verse. Now, let me ask you this, and and I'm going to let you go in about two minutes. What's this? When did the Holy Spirit come in the believer? In Acts what? The second chapter, right? Okay. Now, Acts the first chapter, the Holy Spirit had not yet come in the believer on the day of Pentecost. Okay, so we have to assume, and and here, this is how you study the Bible. Did they have the Spirit? Did they not have the Spirit? Was it before the cross, after the cross? Rightly divide the Word. So to rightly divide the Word, I cannot read Acts 125 and see it in any other light then, these guys don't have the Holy Spirit yet, so they're still living according to the law in their minds. Okay? So when the Word says this in the 21st verse, now Judas is dead and they need to fill that spot. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed to Joseph called uh, Barsabas, who surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship 
Now, they could have stopped right there. And the prayer would have been fine. You show us, Lord. If it's Matthias or Justice, you show us. But they still had judgment in their heart. Is why they said this. Because this is a Hebraic tradition about people who take their own lives. That they are separated from God. That's the reason they said this. To take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. That is the customary thought of the Jews of that day, that if a person took their own life, they chose their own place they go to. Hell. So, modern day preachers just read this and say, well, see, Judas is in hell. No. No. Paradise wouldn't have known it was Jesus if Judas hadn't done what he did. So, how can I beat myself up if people who are going through what I thought I failed in, but now I can have compassion See, it's easy to look at a drug addict and say, you need to get off them drugs. But if you've never been hooked on drugs, you have no compassion. Compassion is a conviction to meet that need. That's what compassion is. not just feeling sorry for them, for them. So if you've been through family issues, economical, psychological, relational, whatever issues you've been through, instead of saying, God, what? Why? What did I do wrong? It's not that you so much did anything wrong. But there's people out there that don't know there's hope. And somebody's got to do it. So instead of creating an inventory when something goes wrong in your life. Of why is this going wrong. How about let's not betray Christ by inventorying our works. And just say thank you Lord. Evidently. I'm going to run into somebody who's needing what I'm learning through this right now. If you want to shorten a trial, start looking to minister out of your struggle. Amen. And so if you're here today and you've had failures in your life, welcome to life. Amen. It, 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 it's absolutely amazing. Every one of us have done different things in our life that maybe we're not proud of. And there will be other things that we do. We think, oh my gosh. But Mark, I don't want to betray Christ. Well, remember why Judas did it. He was hurt. He was offended. He thought God had failed him and disrespected him. Do you know how many people today, because they, they aren't manifested in their healing physically, they betray Christ? Because they feel like God disappointed them. Well, he said, I'm the Lord that heals you. Why am I not healed? Well, as long as I have that attitude, there is no ministry. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for life. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us about Judas. Because I'll guarantee you, we have all come short of the glory. (laughs) But God, we're not going to use that on our resume as a bad mark anymore. We're going to say that's a new, new place where I'm going to have a witness to win people and to share the gospel of Jesus. Father, I refuse to be condemned anymore. You didn't make me do it. I did it by choice. But I ain't going to hang myself over it anymore. Somebody had to do it. 